Hey, what's up, Rockstars? Welcome into the live show Thursday night, every Thursday, 9 p.m., right here back on the Rockstar Flipper YouTube channel. Uh, the title probably seems scary, but don't worry, it is not terrifying. And, uh, you know, it is uh, how to find eBay, Amazon, and Poshmark inventory the real way because thrift stores are horrible. I was going to title this video, Thrift Stores Are Horrible, but people would have gotten kind of the wrong idea. So they are not your best friend in sourcing. I read a thread tonight in a Facebook group that was kind of disappointing where, you know, we talk about all the time that my thrift stores are through the roof in pricing and it's true. Um, but people just giving up because their thrift stores are so bad and it happens. But I'm going to show you guys uh, some alternative ways to find inventory tonight. So I made a webinar about this where I listed 12 things. I charged for it. I'm going to give you guys some of that information for free tonight. Not all of it, but I'm going to give you some of these places. So get your pen and paper out um, and record some of this. Let's uh, floppy Bob. Thanks for that. Uh, congrats on 100,000 subs. Thank you. And welcome into everybody. Uh, Adam from Adam's Exploits and Justin also is here. Um, they are my admins. If you have questions, comments, and concerns, let's jump into it. How to find inventory for eBay, Amazon, and Poshmark in 2020 besides thrift stores. Get your pen and paper ready. Get your notepad. Get your phone's notepad ready. Um, I'm just going to dive into it, and you guys better take notes on these few that I'm going to give you for free. Um, that webinar that discusses all 12 of them, along with some other ways, wholesale, etc., is below if you want it after you watch this video. If you think that these free ones we're worth your time, worth spending a little bit of uh, your Thursday night with me, then by all means, grab the 2020 package below. Let's do it. Um, if your thrift stores are over, first, before we jump into it, how many people in the live chat have thrift stores that are overpriced like mine, where your t-shirts are four and five bucks, your jeans are $10, $12? How can you make money on that? They don't have a lot of hard goods. There's no video games. There's no DVD, VCR combos. There's none of this stuff going on. Um, how many people here have that going on and what big major city are you near? Let's put it in the chat so others can see they are not alone in the struggle, the thrift store struggle. And trust me, there are ways to get creative. You can find plenty of merchandise at thrift stores. The problem is you can't find enough at the thrift stores. Not anymore because look, let me give you the secret about thrift stores. They want to make profit and money. The hardest thing in business to do is make money off of somebody else that wants to make money. When you are dealing with the person who's a reseller, they're a reseller just like you and I, but they just happen to get their stuff for free. We don't, right? Some of us don't. So they're looking to make as much money as possible. It's really hard, right? Okay, so here is the top three ways outside of thrift stores that you should be making money finding merchandise. Okay, ready? Pens and papers, here it is, number one, people are going to yell because I spent like three minutes getting into this. Sorry, guys. Uh, number one, estate sales. Everyone knows what estate sales are, right? Estate sales are when a person passes away, a person um, moves out of the state. They don't want to keep it. Uh, maybe they get a divorce. There's a lot of reasons for an estate sale to happen. Uh, it's basically the whole house. It's a garage sale, but it's the whole house. We all know about garage sales and yard sales. I'm not even going to mention that because that's just a given. Estate sales are one that some people know about. Some people are scared. Some people are not. Estate sales are a fantastic way to go through an entire house full of merchandise. We're not talking about a little yard sale. We're not talking about a thrift store. We're talking about an entire house. Now, the secrets, there's two secrets to estate sales. So number one is that some of them are ran by companies and some are ran by people. If you find the ones that are being ran by the family or the people or individuals, those are gold mines for sure. The companies don't know how to price everything, so you can do well at those uh, also, but it's not quite as easy. So a lot of people will say go on the first day to get the best stuff. Some people will say go on the last day to get the cheapest prices. Now, while you will find some stuff on the last days, remember everyone's rushing into these estate sales day one and buying up all the good stuff. Don't be afraid to pay up on day one for quality inventory and merchandise. Secret number two for the estate sales is make friends, networking. I think this is like a recurring theme on my channel. Make friends, network, and be personable. Take business cards. I see in the threads all the time where people are like, the Goodwill store asked me uh, what I'm doing with my stuff. The estate sale wants to know. Yard sale people ask me if I'm reselling. Outside of thrift stores, because we're putting the thrift stores over here for now. Yes. The answer is yes. I'm a reseller because let me tell you what the greatest motivation in life is. 
It's money. And that's going to go into our number two and number three ways to source. People want money. So you're going to go to an estate sale. They're not going to like to hear that you're making money off of them. But you know what's going to happen? The next time they can't move something or they've got a bunch of leftover inventory or they want somebody to come in and make money on something really quick, they're going to call you. They want money. People that want money are the people that you get to make money off of. The thrift stores want money. Of course they want money, but they've got a way to make money. They've got people coming in. You have to put yourself in front of people that want money. And people at estate sales are only interested in getting rid of merchandise and making money. They're not a thrift store that's going to be there tomorrow. That estate sale is not going to be there tomorrow. They may be at another estate sale, but that estate sale is done. It's gone. Make network connections, make friends, stop being scared to tell them like, here's my business card. I have cash. I buy stuff. You call me. I'm interested. Trust me. I used to have people that would be like, oh, you're making money off me and like throw the business card. And a week later when they're broke and need to pay the rent, they're like, Hey, can I get, can I get some of that cash? <laughs> yeah. But for a lot less now, make friends, make friends. Okay. Number one. So that that's estate sales, right? So that's uh, yeah, uh, my reseller treasure says make bundles and piles. Estate sales love for you to buy more. The more you buy, the better deal they'll give you. So it's a great, um, that's a great, uh, a great tip. Uh, Nicole owns a thrift store, and so no, you don't want to shop my store for inventory because I already pulled it off for eBay. Yeah, thrift stores are trying to make the most amount of money. It's hard to make the most amount of money that you can make when you're buying it from somebody that's trying to make the most amount of money that they can make. Estate sales are trying to profit the most. But for the most part, they're trying to just get rid of stuff. They're more interested in getting rid of stuff just as much as they are as making money. The Goodwill store is only interested in one thing. So keep that in mind. Um, what did somebody else say? Somebody said something. Uh, estate sales are good, especially if you can go last last day. Yeah, the entire house. Uh, do not get ungated on Amazon. I find products here and there. Uh, we'll talk about extraordinary money, but it requires invoices. Okay, so number two, the number two, get your notepad out. The number two way to find inventory outside of thrift stores and your normal garage yard sale and even the estate sales. This is an awesome tip, right? I'm going to screen share with you guys. It's Facebook, not Facebook marketplace. Facebook marketplace is fine. You can make a lot of money off of Facebook marketplace, but don't go on Facebook marketplace trying to scroll through and find people that have posted their inventory. If somebody took the time to post an item on Facebook marketplace, Chances are it's probably overpriced or expensive because A, they're just hoping to get a sucker. B, they probably put some kind of time into researching it and they're just too lazy to put it out on eBay, but they're going to give you that response. Well, it sells for 200 on eBay. Great. Fantastic. Put it on eBay. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is joining Facebook groups and Facebook neighborhood pages and becoming personable, becoming the person that people will call. So I always tell this story to everyone. Uh, there's a neighborhood behind me. A lot of you that live around me are, are familiar with this area. No, it starts in the half a million and up to three quarters. And some of those houses, a million plus dollars. These are very wealthy folks uh, or have old money, whatever it is. When they get rid of stuff, they don't, they're not going on eBay or Amazon to sell it. They're not listing it on Facebook marketplace for sale, right? They're either, they're either taking it to Goodwill throwing it away, or they are having a yard sale. Now, this particular neighborhood only has yard sales twice a year. So the whole rest of the year, they have nothing that they can do with their stuff besides donate it or get rid of it. So that's where I go into the Facebook groups and I make a friend with the owner or make your own Facebook group for your neighborhood and own it. Then you can put out little placement ads. You don't say like, hey, um, I'm selling fat pills or I blah, blah, blah. I want to sell you this. No, you go to the owner of the group and you say, look, these people are donating. I want to buy the stuff before they take it and throw it away or donate it. I just want to pop up an ad once a week or once a month that says, hey, if you're going to donate clothes or toys or video games or shoes, please shoot me a message, shoot me an email. Let me know what you have. I may or may not be able to buy it. I'll pay cash. Done. Give the owner of the Facebook group a couple of uh, Starbucks gift cards or Walmart gift cards or Chili's gift cards, and they'll let you post whatever you want to post as long as you don't overdo it, right? Be nice. Make friends, right? Let me show you guys. I'm going to screen share real quick just to give you an example. Um, it is live, yes. If you see that little button up in the corner, it says live. I think it is. So yeah, there's uh, there was you know a lady in in the group in the neighborhood near me that was selling her husband's 
retired he retired as a lawyer and had 50 suit jackets she's like i'm donating them give me like 50 bucks a buck a piece and they're yours i met her at starbucks five minutes later i've got 50 suit jackets i'm home we're listing suit jackets and within a week i sold two of these suit jackets and was profitable and every suit jacket after that the other 48 even if i just made 10 or 15 bucks a piece was five six seven hundred dollars in profit on a 50 dollar purchase that literally took me five minutes to pick up, right? I met her at Starbucks. It was that easy. So let me show you guys real quick. I'm just going to screen share um, my screen here. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Uh, yeah. So you guys see, this is a neighborhood page um, near me. Let me show you guys. This is a neighborhood near me. It's called Fishhawk. It's a very wealthy neighborhood. They're all houses in the four or 500,000 and up, most of them closer to a half a million. And um, this neighborhood page has almost 4,000 members. And if we remove this from the screen and we add another screen share of this one, this is neighboring towns around me. This is um, Lithia, Fishhawk, Riverview, Brandon, and Valrico. That's the number five towns around me. This particular group has almost 28,000 members. Imagine all those people that don't have the time. They just want to donate. They want the crap out of their house, right? So this is all ways you join these groups. There's probably 20 groups around me, 20 of these size these size groups, these size places that you can get stuff from. Stop scrolling through Facebook Marketplace looking for people that have already done their research, right? They're not going to do you any good. They're not going to be helpful because they already know what stuff's worth. They're trying to make money. Now, just because the neighborhood isn't wealthy doesn't mean you can't make money off of it. My neighborhood's a middle-class neighborhood. You're talking about 250 to 300 and up to 350 and $400,000 houses in this neighborhood. And lots of people here sell stuff. So you can do it as well. Um, <laughs> Aurora Styles, that's Myra, says she's not even good at making friends. Um, you don't have to make friends. You just post ads, make friends with the, the admins only. So that's number two. Please go into Facebook groups. Please make the most of Facebook yard sale groups, buy, sell trade groups, make the most out of your um, neighborhood pages. There's groups and there's pages. Let me give you another two, uh, secret number two, letter B. Inside a lot of these Facebook neighborhoods and pages and groups, they have event calendars, right? Event calendars that show you when their community yard sales are. Imagine if somebody handed you a map or a calendar with every community yard sale all the way around you. Now we all have yard sale treasure map, but imagine if you knew ahead of time when every single community yard sale around you was going on. Well, inside a lot of those Facebook groups, you can pull it right off their calendar. They have a calendar, an event tab, right up there at the top or on the side or whatever. And you can find out when their community yard sale is. You can search by yard sale, garage sale. You can also just ask in the group like, hey, when's our next community yard sale for this community? Boom, put it down on your own little calendar and then you'll have a whole set of weekends filled out. This is all a part of the webinar. I did an entire 90 minute webinar talking about how to find all these alternative ways. Yard sales, garage sales are the best. If you live up north, that might not be so easy, but you know what's great about the yard sale and Facebook groups? It's that even if you live up north in Michigan or Cleveland or Ohio or um, uh, Colorado where it snows all the time and people can't have yard sales, what are they gonna do with all this junk? They still need junk out of their house, right? So they're gonna donate it, they're gonna trash it. They're not gonna have a yard sale because it's snowing outside. What if you could be in that group and tell people, hey, if you want to ditch stuff out of your house, I'm interested. Just shoot me an email with some pictures and some lists of stuff that you have, and I'll be happy to buy it. Like, I'll make you an offer. Look at that. Now you guys have connected without ever having any competition. You got somebody who only wants to get rid of their stuff. They're not a, a, a goodwill that wants to maximize their profit. They're going to take just about any offer that you make them, right? Boom. Boom. There you go. I mean, it can't really get any easier than that, right? Again, 90 minutes, I discussed all of this stuff, 12 ways. I've just given you guys two. There's 10 more ways to get stuff that could be the change in your business down below. Okay, the third way. So we're about 15 minutes in. Let's talk about the third way. Does anybody anybody not understand the second way? Anybody not understand the second way? Um, thrift stores are fine. Goodwill bins are fine if you have them. Not everyone has the Goodwill outlets. Not everyone has good thrift stores. I'm giving you alternative ways to make 
money. Okay, the third way, this is the way everyone's going to groan and moan, but it's absolutely phenomenal. It's social media. It does not require you to have 100,000 followers like I do or 112,000 Facebook members or whatever it is. It doesn't require 10,000 followers or 5,000 or 1,000. What it requires is that you are active. Reseller Flips, thank you for the 999 super chat. I really appreciate that. Uh, number one fan, <laughs> appreciate that. You are right up there, definitely for sure. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate that. So the number three way is social media. And here's the trick. I go into Facebook groups. How many people watching have ever been in a Facebook group where they've seen somebody who wants to sell off their inventory or is quitting, uh, quitting eBay, quitting Poshmark, quitting Amazon, don't know what to do. They don't have the time. They're going back to school. They're going to college. Uh, their significant other doesn't trust them or want them to sell. How many people have ever been in a Facebook group where somebody wants to liquidate or wants to contact or network, right? Now, this is going to go against my first uh, rule, but I'll tell you why it's okay. Rule number one is don't buy off of somebody else that's trying to make the most money. Well, resellers are trying to make the most money, especially when they're in groups, right? Here's the trick. When you're buying from somebody that wants to liquidate or get rid of or quit or get out of, they're done. They just want to recover some amount of money. Now, some of this is going to be junk, right? Some of it's going to be garbage. They're bad sourcing people. They're bad resellers. They have a terrible amount of stuff. Some of this is going to be stuff where Susan only deals in women's but has a bunch of guys stuff. She doesn't want to deal with it. Or she only deals in clothes and doesn't care about video games. Like here's all these video games I got. I bought out a garage sale. I bought out an estate sale. I bought a storage unit. I hate clothes. I only love hard goods. Can you buy the clothes? This goes about that. This is number three. Research and network with other people who are buying. That guarantees you you've got somebody who's got inventory. You might be able to work out deals. Are you going to make the most profit off of them? Sometimes, not always. But it's a place to constantly find inventory and merchandise. All three of these processes require that you network and, and make friends. Nobody in business is successful without making friends. You're not going to do it on your own. And I don't mean you need a husband or wife or brother or business partner. You've got to make relationships. You've got to network. You've got to make friends. That's how you're going to do it. When you're every day getting up, trudging to the store, there's just no way to maintain that and scale it. You can chug along and kind of get some stuff, but you have to make networking and contacts. Every piece, if you if you watch my Instagram, I, I put up a story about like 5,000, 6,000 pieces of merchandise. Most of the stuff in here came from my connections and networking, not from thrift stores. Some of it did, but not all of it, right? The worst thing that you can do is ask and then say no. That's it. I mean, that's great. That's great advice. Bear Kitty, that's great advice. The worst that can happen is you ask and they say no. So there are tons and tons of ways to get merchandise and you have to go out and find it. It's not going to just walk through the door and plop itself on the desk. Now, what's important about these three ways is you're not going into thrift stores spending hours and hours and hours shopping and driving and gas and wear and tear on your car and maintenance and all that stuff. You're going to buy stuff in groups, in lots. And that way you're going to save a ton of money or a ton of time sourcing money too. So those three ways, I'm giving you guys some, some little nuggets here. Three awesome ways to find merchandise. When you go out and you use these ways, I want you guys to come back to this channel and comment and tell me whether you do it now or you do it later, what happened when you use these tactics to find new merchandise? Because I think you're going to have a ton of success, a ton. Uh, will you post this video after? This video is live if you're watching it between 9 and 10 p.m. on Thursday, February 20th. After this video is done, you will be able to come back and rewatch it anytime that you want. Um, how to stay motivated doing the same thing all the time. Money motivates me, my friend, motivates me. Okay, so if there's questions about those three, please ask them and also feel free to, um, yeah, somebody else said word of mouth, friend to friend. So Giselle, let me, let me expand on that. I'm glad she pointed that out. Word of mouth and friend to friend. When you start making friends with uh, estate sales or garage sale people, let's say that you live in Colorado and it snows and you can't, you know, no one has garage sales, right? 
So you offer to buy someone's garage sale out all their stuff and you buy it and it goes well and you make a deal and you, you spend 50 bucks or hundred bucks and you get, you know, 500, 600, $700 worth of stuff and you bring it all back. They're going to go tell their mom. They're going to tell their brother, their sister, their bro their brother's fiance. They're going to tell everyone, Hey, this guy will maybe buy your stuff out, hit them up. And that's why you give them a business card and you say, look, if any of your friends, give them a couple business cards, your friends, your family, your cousins, your mothers, your brothers, your sisters, your dogs are interested let them know that I buy stuff. I'm looking for clothes, for video games, for shoes, for jewelry. I'm looking for all this stuff. Maybe you're a niche jewelry buyer, right? You could start advertising to buy jewelry and then everyone that you buy from is gonna tell everyone else. Word is gonna get out in that 30,000 member Facebook group that Casey is the guy that buys jewelry. Hit him up. All of a sudden, you're gonna start getting emails and messages and phone calls. Use a burner phone, use a Google voice number, use an email service, whatever it is. Get your name out there. Craigslist is another good one. Uh, you got to keep going. If you don't work, you won't make it. How do you get over feeling like you may offend a homeowner asking for bundles or discounts? Um, Laura of Vermont, uh, you got to get over that. This is going to be the harshest answer I give you ever, Laura, because I love you. Um, you got to get over the feeling of hurting anyone's feelings by offering them a low price. The worst they're going to do is say no. And I tend to start my negotiations off with, hey, look, I really appreciate the offer. I appreciate the chance to buy this. Um, as you know, I'm in this. I've got to be able to make a little money. Um, you know, if this is too low for you, I completely understand. I'm at 200 bucks. That's what I feel comfortable paying. And um, just let me know what we can do. If you can take the 200, we got a deal and I'll pay you right now. It's cash. It's done. We're, we're good and we're out of here. Uh, otherwise, I completely understand. You let me know what you're thinking and uh, and I'll see what I can do. If they come back and they're like, yeah, you know, I really want $300. You'd be like, hey, look, I understand. It's no big deal. Uh, sorry, we couldn't do business. You know, I, I'll be happy to give you 225. Otherwise, I got to walk away. And then they'll, they'll either meet you or they won't. So um, <clears throat> Goodwill e-commerce sites are, are typically expensive. You can buy stuff, but... Uh, not great. So um, I feel like my negotiating 101, I would I would be honest, there's some some things that I'm not confident in and there's some things that I'm really confident in, things that I, uh, I, I would call myself conceited over almost. I will put my in-person negotiating skills um, pretty much up against anyone except a few people that I know. Uh, drive time with Dave is is much more intimidating and better than I am in person. Um, my friend Chris with CNC is pretty good. I think I got him beat. Uh, my in-person negotiating, negotiating is no joke. Internet, video, camera, text messages, it's good. I can make things happen. But my in-person, if you call me out to look at a state sale and I come to negotiate, um, I've got time to think about it, time to look at it, time to negotiate. I, I'm coming in and I've got X and and that's where we're at. And I will walk away from any deal. The one thing that will get you in trouble is greed. I, no way. I will walk away from something over five bucks. And I know when I'm the guy showing up with money, the last thing they want, they're more scared of me leaving with my money than I am of leaving without their items. I promise you of that. I promise you. Uh, uh, Jean LeBlanc. Hey there. Uh, that could be, is that Jacques? Uh, I just reached out to a reseller on Instagram to bulk sell about 50 pairs of shoes. It works. Yeah, absolutely. People will buy challenge accepted. My in-person negotiation it, negotiating is it. Look, if you've got the no fear mentality that I don't care if I leave here without merchandise and they care if you leave without money, you win Every time, I promise you, they will almost like, look, you're going to leave without buying stuff. It's going to happen, but they're going to regret it a lot faster than you. I promise you. Um, yeah. So that's just something you have to get good at and something that you have to, to get, get past. You have to just not be scared to make offers. Just make the offer. Look, if you follow what I'm telling you here and the other nine or 10 ways that are down in that webinar that are part of the 2020 package, uh, if I didn't mention that, it was 90 minutes, 12 things, and it's included with my package below if you haven't got it. If you've already got the package, go watch that webinar. Some of you have it. Go watch it. It's amazing. Um, and it's called Alternative Sourcing Methods, Removing the Middleman. We're removing the thrift stores. We're going right to the end users is what they're called. Um if you watch that and you start buying from these sources, you will make so much money and so many deals that Jay, thank you, Jay, that you will not 
have to. Jacques is in the chat too. <laughs> hey, Jacques. Um, that you will not have to worry about walking away from a deal. It's okay because there's a hundred more down the line. Hundred more down the line. You'll be okay. Um, Lily says, I've had people let me come by after estate sales, uh, after it ends. hundred dollars, I can have all I can carry. I've gotten tons of vintage formal dresses, jewelry, etc. cetera, uh, totaling 50 cents to a dollar. Fantastic example, Lily. Um, I have bought out an estate sale from a guy, Dave will tell you, this is a long time ago. It was the uh, infamous fire truck bell, um, Barbie dolls, NASCAR toys, um, vintage items, the, the fire truck bell that we sold for eight or 900 bu- or 900 bucks plus shipping, 900 plus the, I think we charged 80 or 90. Um, and then uh, all this stuff. And the guy was just like, yeah, it's all the collection. And I really want like 3000 bucks. And Dave's like, you know, drive time with Dave has no fear. He's like, I give you 30 bucks. And the guy's like, what? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We, can't, we can't offer 30. We can't offer 30 bucks, but we can offer something reasonable. We're, we're not gonna be able to pay $3,000. We thought this stuff was worth four or 5,000 bucks, which it turned out to be that the bell alone sold for 900 and change. Um, and I think I went in and I was like, look, man, you know, we really were comfortable paying a thousand. We, we didn't want to spend a lot more than that. We know you're at 3000, uh, you know, that's just not going to work. Uh, tell me what the best number you could do. And he's like, if you took it for 2,500, I'd take it right now. And I said, yeah, we're just, we're just way far apart. I really apologize. I felt like Rick from, uh, Pawn Stars, but I was like, look, you know, we wanted a thousand. We were even willing to give you 12 or 1300 bucks. He's going to kill me. I'll give you $1,500 and that's it. I mean, that's really, really it anymore. We're just going to have to walk away. And I, and I apologize. And he's like, yeah, I, I, 2,500 was all I was willing to come down to. He goes, if you took it for two grand, I'd be really upset, but I couldn't. We got him down a thousand bucks just by the back and forth negotiating. I said, yeah, look, I understand. We can't do it. We're not gonna be able to make a deal. And uh, we, we hope, you know, we wish you the best and we hope you have a great day. And uh, if anything changes, just call us. I said, uh, 1500 and uh, we'll bring the cash back. And he goes, you have 1500 on you right now? I said, of course we do. And he goes, well, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll take the $1,500. I'm like, all right, sweet. He was more scared of me leaving with that money than I was of leaving with his, not leaving with his stuff. So, hey, Laura, how you doing? Hi, Bolo buddies. Um, okay, so Bulwark, what did I miss there? What's up, California Flipper? Um, any other questions uh, about sourcing or alternatives? Look, if you guys are relying on thrift stores, you're killing yourself. Not even if your thrift stores have good prices, it is, there's so many better ways to get inventory. I promise you, so many better ways. Adam just put my email up there. If you're interested in the uh, webinar or the package or training or coaching calls or other videos that you need on certain topics that might be on my YouTube channel, just email me rockstarflipper at gmail.com. You can also DM me on um, on Facebook or Instagram. I answer pretty much all of those. Thrift stores are hit or miss and, and you can't rely on them. Uh, uh, you know, Courtney's here from Bolo Buddies and she, uh, she knows, she knows the deal. Um, have I ever bought Dick's Sporting Goods returns? I have not, but I've seen some people do pretty well on them. Sporting Goods is a great, great thing. Uh, what are the better ways to get inventory? Rewatch this video. I discussed the the ways uh, in the beginning 20 minutes. Uh, Zahara Teak. Zahara Teak? I like that name. Zahara Teak? I think it's like Boutique, but Zahara Teak. I like that. Great name. How much are coaching calls? Caroline. Um, well, we have a 20, the package that you can add to it. So it ends up being $40 and 40 cents. Uh, and I have a complete mentoring package for 99. So there's a couple options. Just shoot me an email, rockstarflipper at gmail.com. And I'll send you out the options. We'd love to get on a call with you. We'll help you out. We'll get your sales up. We'll get things fixed. And I'll give you everything you need, including all the webinars and videos included. Uh, thank you, California. Appreciate it. Uh, and appreciate Adam, our admin, uh, his YouTube channel is Adam's Exploits. Uh, go check him out. He's got some great interviews with some great resellers. He interviews all the different resellers. Um, so check out Adam's channel. Uh, just click on his name there or type Adam's exploits into YouTube. Thanks for being a great admin. Give him a big thank you and a round there for every week he's here. We appreciate it. Uh, those of you local to Florida, the Tampa area next Thursday, uh, no live show next Thursday. It is the eBay upfront event at 6 30 PM until 9 30 PM at armature works in Tampa, Florida, eBay upfront. I will be there. Uh, come say hi to me, uh, hang out, take pictures, take some video, uh, whatever you want to do, but, uh, no live show next Thursday. I don't know if I'm going to do a live show at all next week. We might skip a week. Um, but okay. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's it. So, 
Yeah, I appreciate everyone. Um, if there's some, uh, can't wait to see you again, Barbie. Uh, yes, better Barbie here in the house. You will be there. I know a lot of you will be, so I can't wait to meet all of you uh, Thursday night. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the webinar. Everybody who grabs it tonight in the package, learn some new ways to source, guys. Please make some more money. Um, I'm going to cut tonight's live show out here in just a minute. If there's any questions, um, I would love to take them right now. Otherwise, I'll let you guys roll out. I do appreciate you taking the time for a half an hour. Um, usually, we're on for about 40 or 45 minutes, but I got to get some major work done. Uh, the weekend is coming fast, and man, I am behind. I caught up on taxes and accounting. Uh, also, a part of that package below, if you're behind on your taxes and your accounting, it's all in there, along with the social media, along with the uh, webinars, along with how to register your business, along with the bolos. It's all down there, guys. It's just $20.20. Make the most of it. Just did my taxes. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on mine. I'll get them done. I'll get them done. Uh, the Community Recycle Center. Recycle centers are great. There's all kinds of recycle centers. Use Google. You'll see what I'm talking about. eBay removed because of Vero policy. Uh, I'd have to see what the Vero was. It could have been fake. Don't know without seeing it. Sorry. Uh, where is the 100,000 YouTube unboxing? Oh, great question. Um, yes, I did hit 100,000 subscribers and YouTube takes, uh, as far as I understand about a month to six weeks to send you the package. It's only been a week, a uh, week and a half. So as soon as I get the YouTube box with my plaque, I'll unbox it on the show and I'll show you guys be pretty cool, pretty excited about it. So Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Lily. Thank you to everyone who joined the live show. I appreciate it. Uh, next week will be uh, no live show. And then the week after, I'll make sure I do an extra long one to get everyone in. Thank you, Adam. Thank you to everyone. Enjoy the tips from this show. Uh, grab the package below. It's really going to help you. I promise you, you get everything, um, including three webinars, 125 videos, the whole shebang, and my VIP group, where they share even more tips and tricks. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful night.